thank you for being here and we are all ready to start our second session today and yes. you have given us so much to think about so please enlighten us again okay so we will continue using the divisional charts but obviously when you look at a divisional chart and see certain indications you need a way to time things when you see that in this chart there is a potential for recognition in career or in this chart there will be a good child born or in this chart there will be lot of education a lot of accomplishments in education a lot of scholarship that's not enough basically knowing things statically is not enough you need to time them you need to know when things will come so for that we divide the life into major phases and we have these dashas antar dashas etc that people are aware of and there are various dashas rashi dashas nakshatra dashas and i have experimented with lot of systems but one system that is part of my staple one system that i find working pretty reasonably is the nakshatra dasha system and the main ingredient of the system is obviously what everybody uses vimshotri dasha but what i found is there are nine other dashas that parashara teaches there is a dasha called ashtotri shodashotri shatrinsha samadasha shatabdika dasha and so on so there are exactly nine dashas and the way parashara taught it he said if this condition applies use this dasha if the 10th lord is in the 10th house then use chatrasi iti samadasha if the lagna is in vargottama use shatabdika dasha if the lagna lord is in 7th or the 7th lord is in lagna use dvisaptati samadasha now the thing is if you compute the probability of applicability of this dashas for example lagna lord in 7th or 7th lord in lagna the probability is 1 16 because 112 probability of lagna lord being in 7th 112 probability of lagna, 7th lord being in lagna mm. so e either this or that so 16 so some conditions are 16 probable lagna some conditions are actually half probable if you take a chart like if you take a dasha like shatrinsha samadasha or shodashotri dasha those are applicable in half the charts because the condition is if lagna is in sansara and then so on so thing happens night birth or lagna is in moon sara day birth like that basically there is a combination so if you look at if you evaluate the mathematical probability of those conditions they range from 1/12 to half so obviously there will be cases where more than one dasha applies because if there are two dashas that are applicable half half and then there is another dasha vimshotri that has no condition that is applicable to all so obviously there will be in every chart if you look at all applicable dashas there may be two three four even five depending on the chart so obviously there has to be one dasha that dominates so one thing that struck my eye is there are exactly nine of these dashas these conditional nakshatra dashas there are exactly nine so i thought maybe there is a link to these dashas and the planets nine planets so from that from that basically i kept i kept looking for hints let me share one let me cha- share the screen here uh, zoom so you will see this is my website if you go to my website vedicastrologer.org/articles you can see an article called unified nakshatra dasha approach if you see if you download that pdf you will see that you will see the conditions the dashas the nine dashas and the conditions enumerated here okay so these are the nine dashas and this is the name of the dasha and in brackets you see the years of the dasha how many years each dasha is they are for different durations and then this is the condition of applicability and there is a seed nakshatra for each dasha for example in vimshotri dasha the first dasha is kritika the first dasha is sandasha so that that is basically kritika kritika is the seed and the lord is sun <coughs> similarly here in shodashotri dasha there is a different seed it, is, it starts from pushya dwashotri dasha starts from revati so there is a different seed nakshatra uh, for each of these different systems and then what i found is i this is not given by parashara parashara gave these and he gave the conditions so what oh. i deduced is i mapped these nakshatras to a planet interesting and, and, i won't go into the details here but to give a gist 
the tenth lord being in tenth that basically shows that work is tenth is work right so the tenth lord in tenth means work the accomplishment in the world is very important for that person so for that uh in terms of what you do to do to the world what you do in the world the work the karka is saturn so i took saturn as the controlling planet and also swati which is ruled by vayu the wind god is the nakshatra that that is the seed for this dasha and again saturn is a windy planet so there is a connection with vayu so like this basically you you can i found some esoteric link between the controlling planet and the star or some some theme reflected by this condition so i have given that explanation i won't repeat it here people can download the pdf and if they are interested they can go through okay. it but the bottom line is my conclusion is this <laughs> for each divisional chart uh, sorry for each uh, dasha there is one controlling planet that is the main hypothesis and then if that controlling planet is strong in addition to condition applying then you use that dasha just because the condition applies if you use the dasha you will be using shatrashotri in half the charts and you will be using shatrin se samadasha in half the charts <coughs> because this is lagna in sanswara in day time or lagna in moonswara in night time that at least the first one is 1/4 the second one is 1/4 probability so totally is half probability so half the charts will have this dasha half the charts will have this dasha but the thing is just because this condition is applicable when i apply the dasha i don't see any consistent results i see vimshotri working better so so that is why I, i concluded that this condition that parashara gave is not a sufficient condition this is a necessary condition if this applies then the chart then the dasha may be considered otherwise don't even consider but in addition if the controlling planet is strong in the chart then use that dasha so this is my 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 conclusion this is my direction what parashara taught is only this and my direction is that the condition is not a necessary condition but only a, sorry it's not a sufficient condition but only a necessary condition and it will become sufficient if this additional thing also holds the controlling planet is strong and now let us say there are two or three different conditional dashas that are applicable take the lords the controlling planets see which one is the strongest if one if one of them is in ucha or mora trikona or ajmitra rasi use that dasha if not if none of the controlling planets is strong just stick to the vimshotri dasha it will work better so this is basically the approach that i have taken this is my what i call as unified approach and the conditions i don't expect you to remember now but basically the main things was, so so let's take a step back physically practically when i apply in charts i don't evaluate all these conditions because it's it's a waste of time what i do is i just see if any planet is particularly strong in the chart like uh, in mola trikona or ucha or ajmitra rasi if a particular planet is strong then i see is the dasha of that planet dasha for which that planet is controlling planet is this applicable in the chart if i die, if i find nothing then i just go to vimshotri so let us take a few examples so, so let me share let's continue with the chart that we were seeing in the at the end of the last session so let's say we take dhirubhai ambani's hora chart okay is any planet particularly strong here sun sun is in one sign then jupiter is in one jupiter. sign mercury is in one sign mercury. mars is in exaltation okay yes. so sun mercury jupiter mars and that's it those are the planets and for sun the i won't show the other window again we'll just stick to this but just take it from me you can you can look at the pdf independently sun is the controlling planet for a dasha called uh, shatabdik dasha which means lagna in vargotama so if you take the d2 chart lagna is at 5 degree leo okay that's not vargotama in leo vargotama comes at the middle of the sign so that is between 1320 to 1640 so the shatabdik dasha for which sun is the controlling planet doesn't apply okay and then mars mars is the controlling planet for ashtotri dasha and ashtotri dasha is applicable if rahu is in a quadrant or trine from lagna lord but not in lagna itself rahu has to be in a quadrant or trine from lagna lord is sun and rahu is in 6th house from sun so he is not in a quadrant or trine 
so forget about ashtotri dasha that doesn't apply i mean that, uh, that because the necessary condition doesn't apply yes, yes. the fact that controlling planet is strong means nothing so you mm-hmm. don't use it and then jupiter is the controlling planet for shor shotri dasha and the rule for that is uh, I, I forget the exact rule but i'll tell you how i use it the exact rule is based on daytime but sometime uh, nighttime but and then the hora but the rule, but the rule that i i practically how i apply it is in uh, sun hora which is basically the first half of art science and second half of event science that is sun hora okay in sun hora moon has to be in the first 180 degree from sun in the moon hora moon has to be in the other half that is basically what it boils down to the rule that is given in the in paras by parasra boils down to from sun moon is in the first 180 degree and lagna is in sun hora or otherwise lagna is in moon hora and moon is in the visible half basically the previous 180 degrees so where is sun here he is in leo and where is moon he is in the invisible half he he is moon is basically in the first 180 degree in that case lagna has to be in lagna has to be in the in the uh, uh, first half of art part or second half of event part so it is applicable the only caveat is if the controlling planet is weak even if he is in one sign or exaltation suppose he is actually at the fa- at the end of a last navamsa of a sign or the first navamsa of a sign he is too weak then i don't consider that so that is that is one exception that i mentioned in the pdf but i haven't mentioned now so based on that if you look at jupiter he is basically at 27 degree 27 26 pisces so that 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 gives him one kind of strength he is in vargottama but the thing is for the, for the purpose of controlling the sas when a planet is either either at the fag end of a sign or fag beginning of a sign they don't qualify as being strong so i don't jupiter is again not strong here and for mercury i won't go through the competition but if you look at the longitudes basically uh, that condition again doesn't apply so i will not i will not go through the exact details if you go through the pdf and apply it you can see exactly why but the bottom line is even though there are four conditional dashas applicable in this chart none of the controlling planets is strong for the dasha to override vimshotri dasha so i just go to simple vimshotri dasha use vimshotri dasha and then select the hora as the divisional chart so in other words if you look at moon he is at 22 degree sagittarius in rashi chart but in d2 he is at the middle of virgo so he is in hasta nakshatra right this 14 degree 30 minutes in virgo is basically hasta nakshatra so moon is in hasta nakshatra so first dasha will be that of moon so you get you get moon then you get mars you get rahu so you can see that the jupiter dasha was running from 1964 august till 1980 unlike we discussed in a previous video it is exactly in 1965 that is dasha this is life changed he started he he got into he got out of a partnership with another person who was very cautious he, he had his own business and he started accumulating huge amounts of yarn he he was basically importing stuff from turkey he accumulated huge amounts speculatively and then the prices went up he made lot of profits he expanded into some other business some other business petrochemicals clothing etc and then he became a big name and in 1977 78 he had a public issue of uh, stocks of his company he went public and there was huge demand for his stocks he became a celebrity in india and all that was during the 1964 1980 period this was the period that made him a top businessman in india and he took so many gambles in this time he took lot of risks and all those risks paid off and that is basically due to jupiter uh and moon giving the gajakesar yoga and vipreet raj yoga like we discussed earlier so in this case the vimshotri dasha is the most applicable dasha and now let us see some other example let's let's take my chart if you take my chart i mentioned in a previous uh session that in d24 the vimshotri dasha applies now let's see let's apply the principles in d24 
what are the planets that are particularly strong moon is strong in one house right yes. venus is exalted he is strong mm -hmm. and then ketu he is in one sign scorpio is one of the one signs of ketu mm -hmm. so ketu venus and moon are the strong planets and moon is the controlling planet for a dasya called shashti samadasya or also known as shashti haini dasya that dasya is applicable if sun is in lagna so that's not the case here so moon being moon being strong means nothing now venus being strong that venus is the controlling planet for a dasya called panchotri dasya and the panchotri dasya applies if the dwadasya amsha is in cancer and dwadasya amsha if you look at lagna in d24 it is a 3 degree cancer okay 3 degree cancer so if you map that to dwadasya amsha if you find further division of d24 find dwadasya amsha of that then the thing is 3 degree cancer will go to taurus the first 2 and 1/2 degrees will go to gemini second 2 and 1/2 degree will go to Ta taurus not 2 and 1/2 is 2 and 1/2 but it's 30 divided by 12 That's basically yeah two and a half. So first two and a half is Gemini, second two and a half is Taurus and so on. So that is that doesn't fall in Cancer. So that Dasha also doesn't apply. And Ketu is the Ketu is the controlling planet for a Dasha called Dwadashotri Dasha, which applies if Lagna is in a Navamsa of Venus. So Lagna has to be either in Taurus or Libra Navamsa. And again these Navamsas are Navamsas of D24. so 3 degree cancer i will further divide this into navamsha so this is basically the first navamsha of cancer what is the first navamsha of cancer cancer itself right the navamsha of cancer start as cancer leo gemini uh, virgo and so on so it is it falls in cancer so it doesn't fall in one of these two signs so again ketu being strong doesn't mean anything because the conditional dasha called dwadashotri dasha for which he is the controlling planet Does not apply here. The condition is not satisfied. So, like this, I find the strong planets and see their dasha. See if the condition has held. And because I know exactly what is the condition for each dasha, and if I want to further divide this longitude into dwadasha amsa or navamsa, which you need to do for a couple of dashas, I can do it mentally very quickly. It is very easy for me. But if you have to do it, it may take you a couple of minutes. But the but the benefit of doing that is. what i find in my research is when you use the correct dasha in most of the charts half the charts it is vimshotri but in other half one of these dashas may actually dominate vimshotri so if you use the correct dasha you will get very clear and crisp results you don't have to beat around the bush so if your lagna is correct in the divisional chart and you are using the right dasha things will be much clearer so that's the that's the benefit so if you have interest and time you can basically experiment in the beginning it may take you 10 minutes to find the applicable dasha in a chart but with practice for me it just takes me 15 seconds to identify the right dasha in a particular chart all i have to do is i have to access longitudes here so let us see so vimshotri is the right dasha here so i think we briefly went through it in the last last session also you will see that ketu is a very strong planet here ketu is in the fifth house of scholarship in one sign so in the house of scholarship and also recognition and it was in this dasha when i was just 8 years old to 15 years old it was between the ages of 9 10 and 11 that i passed three three examinations equivalent to bachelor's degree two of them in sanskrit literature and one in hindi literature and before i was 11 years of age i passed these three degrees and i was a sanskrit scholar composing poetry in sanskrit so all that all that scholarship in traditional knowledge jyotish and sanskrit etc came in ketu dasha and this is the house of scholarship and also ketu is the planet of traditional knowledge that is why i had knowledge of jyotish and also knowledge of sanskrit and venus dasha venus is the fourth lord in the ninth house so that he gives fortune in education being the fourth lord in ninth house and also being a quadrant lord in a train is kind of like he is giving raj yoga it's not a tra traditional raj yoga but he is basically a good planet for you and moreover he is aspecting the arohana lagna and a5 we discussed right. earlier the arohana padas a5 is the how is the tangible recognition of scholarship fifth house is your ability your scholarship and a5 is tangible sign of that 
so so during this dasya venus dasya i had in 1987 i stood first in my state and i went to a top school in india and i was i was in the either number 1 or number 2 in my class there i had a good scores so all these things basically all these things are shown all these tangible things like oh he went to indian institute of technology or he is state first all these things are shown by and and i had several other prizes in various competitions like a chess competition painting competition etc so all these prizes in various competitions and getting academic distinctions <laughs> all these things are shown by a5 and because al and a5 are together is kind of like lagna and fifth house being together except that this is basically now we are talking about tangible things so the oh. person's image is tied in a way to specific tangible accomplishments of the person and that is shown by virgo and venus being the planet one of the planets who is aspecting it particularly because he is in ucha he is exalted his aspect on it is very powerful exalted planets aspecting any aruda will give good results relating to the aruda so venus dasha was the dasha that gave uh, scholar uh, those accomplishments and then uh, fifth house uh, sorry 2005 to 2011 was sun dasha second lord in the eighth house so this dasha was a dasha of search for truth lot of research because second house is the house of astrological knowledge and the eighth house is the house of philosophy and research so sun made me question lot of things i accumulated lot of knowledge before but now i questioned everything so there was a reboot i started fresh i did lot of research and moon dasha shows new beginnings and also it shows again going into the world so i was i isolated myself i basically i i in seclusion i just did my research over many years but in moon dasha now I, i'm again coming into into the public and trying to share my knowledge in terms of magazine articles and and sessions like this so this is basically given by moon and we'll see what mars brings he's a yokar kind of 12th house so again yes. in this chart this dasha vimshotri dasha is the applicable dasha to see another example let's look at navamsha okay in this chart which planets are particularly strong? actually let's not go through the entire exercise but particularly mars and mercury are strong here because they are in adhimitra rashi for mars he jupiter is a friend and because they are, he is in the next three signs planets in next three signs or previous three signs become temporary friends and if a planet is your permanent friend as well as temporary friend he becomes adhimitra which means super friend good friend or compound friend so because jupiter is adhimitra he is in adhimitra rashi he is he is particularly strong and the same with mercury so these are the two strong planets here and out of them the dasha shown by mars actually does apply so that is the best dasha in this chart and that dasha is ashtotri lagna lord is venus and from venus rahu is in a kendra in a quadrant so ashtotri dasha will apply and because mars is in adhimitra rashi that dasha will override vimshotri dasha in this case so if you look at the ashtotri dasha of navamsha sorry navamsha ashtotri chart from moon of navamsha okay you will see that mars dasha runs 1988 to 1996 and especially it was rahu antar dasha mars dasha rahu antar dasha that gave marriage to the to the native during this dasha i was married so why did mars give marriage why did mars give me marriage he is the he is the seventh lord of marriage obviously taking lagna in taurus Mars is the seventh lord of marriage, and it may seem like he's in the eighth house, but if you look at the longitudes, Lagna is at twenty-five degree, Mars is at ten degrees. So he is barely on the cusp, on the border between seventh and eighth houses, right? Had he been a few minutes below that, he would have actually been in the seventh house. In other words, because Lagna is twenty-five degree here, the twenty-five degree here. at the end of the sign is the center of the seventh house so 15 degree plus and 15 degree minus which is approximately 10 degree scorpio to 10 degree sagittarius will be the seventh house so smarts is barely on the edge of seventh house and in any case even if he was in the eighth house the seventh lord's agenda is to give you marriage and if he is in the eighth house he will give you suddenly so hmm. in my case actually marriage happened suddenly i just went to india i went back to india after my masters in us 
and one week after i went back to india my engagement took place and i got married one and a half weeks after that so wow. it was indeed sudden <laughs> but the but the bottom line is mars is the one who gives marriage marriage and secondly my wife has a very strong mars she has uh, mars in capricorn giving ruchik yoga in her chart she is a very aggressive and enterprising person very dynamic person and mars is a very key planet in her chart and in any case so seventh lord mars can give ma- marriage secondly from moon from moon mars is in the mars mars is basically in the seventh house and he aspect the seventh house from sun also so you can take lagna is very important but you can also take moon and sun so seventh house from sun is cancer and mars has eighth as- eighth house aspect on that a full aspect so mars has aspect on the seventh house from sun he is associated with the seventh from moon and also he is the lord of the seventh from lagna so he has a clear link to the seventh house from all the three references so he gave he gave wedding and if you look at the if you look at rahu rahu doesn't really have any indication rahu doesn't really show marriage in this chart but the thing is what you have to remember in ashtotri dasha is ketu doesn't have a dasha rahu will give ketu results similarly in shodashotri dasha ketu has a dasha but rahu doesn't so ketu will give rahu's results so here see there is no ketu on the dasha so this rahu on the dasha is basically giving ketu results so ketu is the other seventh lord he is the he is the second seventh lord and he is also in the seventh house from arudha lagna and he is in sukhasthana from moon so he has other and he is in the dharmasthana from sun so he has other indications so ketu is the one who is really giving marriage and not rahu here so it was during the mars and ketu antadasha and apart from this i won't go through transits that much in this session we will do it in a future session but the thing is you can also look at the transits the fact is around the time i got married jupiter was transiting over the longitude of ketu he was very close to the navamsa longitude of ketu he was actually in the in the sign of virgo when i got married and he also had t- aspect on upapada upada lagna in navamsa is in capricorn so jupiter has an aspect on upada so there are other factors also and of course you can look at the annual charts etc but dasha wise mm-hmm. if you look at this person's chart if you want to predict when the person will get married probably moon dasha is not really a strong candidate and mars dasha is a very strong candidate being the seventh lord and then mercury dasha again there is some chance but he is the fifth lord from moon he is in the 12th house from sun he is the sixth and ninth lord not really that strong so you could you can see that in the marriageable age the strongest dasha is mars dasha now let us say Wonderful. let us take dashamsha as another example this is a this is another tricky example so, so in this case you can see that mars is the strongest planet in this chart right he is exalted right and is he at the beginning very beginning or end of a sign no he is at 8 degrees so he is basically well into the sign he is not in the first navamsa or the last navamsa of the sign so hmm. ashtotri if the condition applies ashtotri will be the dasha you don't have to even look at other planets right because mars is clearly strongest planet here so ashtotri what is the condition from lagna lord rahu in a quadrant or trine where is lagna lord mercury <coughs> in taurus and if you look at the longitude in taurus he is at 12 degree and where is rahu 12 degree in leo so he is exactly in a quadrant from lagna lord and he is he in lagna itself no he is not in lagna so ashtotri dasha will apply the necessary condition applies and also the controlling planet is very strong so ashtotri is the dasha the only tricky thing here is again i go to go through it in more detail in the pdf that i refer to but one one rule is though you use moon in most of the cases as the seed of your dasha when moon is particularly weak you want to use lagna and in a rare chart where lagna is also weak because it is at the fag end or beginning of a sign then you use the sun so here if you look at moon where is he in dashamsha he is in kandanta he is in 27 degrees 16 minutes cancer scorpio so he is in the last navamsa of scorpio so he is in gandanta here jastha gandanta and moreover he is in nicha so being in nicha and in gandanta moon is not strong so you actually take the dasha from the lagna 
so you take ashtotri dasha not from janmatara but from lagna sphuta you can select the lagna sphuta in jagannath hora and go to d10 and when you do that you will see that mercury dasha mercury is the lagna lord in the ninth house so he could have given career but he came very early in life i was born in 70 so this is 23 years of age so mercury dasha did not give any career but saturn being the sixth house of livelihood and also fifth fifth lord of uh, puravunya and being in lagna planets in lagna will give a new beginning lagna is your new beginning it is basically your self from the point of view of that area of life so lagna is this virgo is me from the point of view of my career so saturn being the fifth lord in lagna he can give puravunya he can give recognition as a result of puravunya which can give a beginning in the career so it was saturn the sa which gave my which gave a start to my career so i started actually working on i think december 9th a day after senidas has started i uh. started my first job and if you look at the guru dasha hmm you will see that uh, guru is even though he is debilitated he has he is retrograde so debilitated planets when they become retrograde it is basically niche bhanga for that planet so jupiter has niche bhanga it is somewhat akin to the planet being exalted in, a, in a opposite of uh, debilitation so he is basically there is something untoward but at the same time there is break of that and then he has association of these two planets the eighth lord and the 12th lord so if you look at the longitudes mars is at 8 degrees sun is at 19 degrees and jupiter is at 18 degrees so mars is not very close to jupiter but sun is pretty close to jupiter so sun and jupiter are very close so the fourth and the 12th lord and also the seventh lord they are together so when the fourth lord and the 12th lord are together you can see that those are sukha trikonas right you have four trikonas 1 5 and 9 are dharma trikonas they inform you of your duty 2 6 and 7 are artha trikonas 2 6 and 10 and they inform you of your purpose and 3 7 and 11 are kama trikonas they are basically your drive and desires and 4 8 and 12 these are the moksha trikonas are also known as sukha trikonas these are the ones that make you detached or make you happy or not worry about things so the thing is that 12th lord sun and the 4th lord jupiter are together so because of that because they, they, there is a sense of happiness and not really being driven for more so this was a dasha when things were happening smoothly i was i was getting promotions and i was happy where i was i wasn't i was putting just enough into the work that i was doing and things were going smoothly and one more thing you have to notice jupiter being the lord of two quadrants he is the lord of two quadrants and he is in a trine so that is again an auspicious combination if the trine lord is in quadrant or quadrant lord is in trine that is an auspicious combination but because jupiter is associated with the eighth lord see twelfth lord is not really a big problem but the twelfth lord shows being contented but the eighth lord shows lot of disturbances lot of changes ups and downs Uh, roller coaster ride and especially the seventh and eighth lords being together is a marka combination it's not an auspicious combination so because jupiter is associated with mars even though the distance is not very close mars is at 8 degrees and jupiter is at 18 degrees so there is 10 degree gap so they are not very close but at the same time 10 degrees is not like 20 degrees they are still close not very close but still there they are within vicinity of each other so because of that there will be some roller coaster some changes during this time so during this time there were a few changes of in the uh, mo- mostly i was in the same company but i was changing groups and i was changing roles so there were some changes but the fact that jupiter is a quadrant lord in a trine he basically ensured that there was nothing un- untoward and secondly if you look from arun lagna perspective right like i said let me take a step back from lagna i told you earlier that jupiter is the fourth lord joining the 12th lord very closely so he gives contentment he basically says okay enough you don't need to you don't need to basically kill yourself do whatever is needed and be happy 
so 4th house and 12th house show being happy and being contented okay so that is the combination given by jupiter but from the arudh lagna perspective basically what people think of you from your from the image that you have at the workplace lagna is scorpio and the lag and the jupiter from lagna where is he he is the second and fifth lord of recognition and resources so you will be given lot of resources as far as tangible happenings on the ground are concerned you will have you'll be seen as somebody who has lot of resources at disposal for example i may have lot of infrastructure a lot of equipment or maybe lot of people working for me who will get things done or maybe good engineers working for me who will get things done very efficiently so during this period the teams that i was managing were known as teams that are very successful teams that basically get anything done and the team that you have is basically the resource that you have the, my image at workplace that the image is basically shown by jupiter and also fifth house is recognition so jupiter is from the arudh lagna he is a very auspicious planet second and fifth lord and he is in third house and though he is a benefic planet he is in nicha and also he is with two malefic planets so overall you will see that the third house has malefic dominance so the rule is if the third and sixth house is from the arudh lagna how benefic the person is seen as a gentle person soft person and if there are male effects the person is seen as a very aggressive person so at workplace i am perceived as somebody who is very aggressive who is a go getter who is very fierce in getting things done by his team or interacting with other teams and that is indeed the image that i have at work but the thing is that is just a just a mask that i put on it's not like intentionally i pretend to be somebody i am not but the thing is i use words i use facial expressions the way i conduct myself is as though there is a lot of aggression and i want to get things done and that is certainly how people see me but the thing is in, in, in internally i am very happy i'm i I'm, i don't really care if suddenly the teams that i manage are taken away from me i become an independent indip- uh, contributor or i lose that job and i have to just do astrology research for a while i don't really care i don't have that attachment to what i am doing but at the same time while i am doing that work i basically behave like a passionate person in that workplace and that is how people see me and that is basically seen by the arudh lagna so from the lagna you see the reality of the person from the arudh lagna you see the perceptions that the person will will create in the world around him and of course this is only in the only in the professional world in other words yeah. at my workplace this is the image people have in a different area of life people may have may have a different image of me. yes for example Wonderful. take d24 take d24 the chart of uh, your uh, intellectual pursuits and what is the image people have of me as far as my learning is concerned so take the uh, arudh lagna it is in virgo and what is virgo show arudh lagna in virgo shows an intellectual so people see me and who are aspecting this lagna mars is aspecting venus is aspecting so uh, people will see me as an intellectual who can juggle lot of things and who can basically because virgo's nature is to juggle lot of things and synthesize something so people see me as an intellectual as a learned person as a as an analytical and logical person and because of venus aspect they may see me as an optimistic person and because of mars aspect they may see me as a fighter also as a very aggressive fighter and all these are basically the images that people have of me but the thing is at my workplace they see me as a go getter somebody who can if you give a project to narsimha's team he will ensure that it is done in time so that's basically he he will fight with whoever he needs to fight and things will happen that is the image and when it comes to spiritual pursuits if you look at the d20 the lagna is in taurus somebody who's basically who's very persever who has persistence and perseverance like a bull but the persona that people see is jupiter uh, it's a jupiterian sign lagna arul lagna is in pisces so somebody who's very satvik people people who come in touch with me as a result of my spiritual pursuits maybe through my homa manuals or fire yoga manuals or whatever or maybe there are other things that i will do in future as a result of those people who come in touch with me through my spiritual activities through my spiritual pursuit they will see me as a very 
somebody who's committed to rishis because that is pisces somebody who's who's committed to the uh, vedantic uh, scriptural way taught by rishis and somebody who's very satvik that is another aspect of pisces and the lagna lord jupiter is in the ninth house so again somebody with a strong and very satvik sense of dharma so that may be what people think of me in my spiritual life so like this the image that you have in various areas of life may be totally different okay now finally let us see the d7 in d7 i won't go into the details but vimshotri is the best dasha and the cd is moon actually in 99.9999% of the charts moon will be the most applicable seed but there will be a few examples where lagna will apply like we saw earlier my dashamsha lagna is a better seed so if you look at d7 uh vimshotri dasha of d7 i had two children in rahu dasha rahu gave me two children and if you look at the saptamsha in the saptamsha the where is rahu he is the ninth lord of fortune you were a fortune in this area of life and he is with the fifth lord venus he is in lagna so and also he has aspect on the he has aspect on the fifth house right hmm. and moreover from sun as lagna he is the fifth lord in the ninth house from moon hmm. as lagna he has aspect on the fifth house and also on the fifth lord so he is associated with the fifth house from all references sun moon and lagna mm-hmm. and more importantly from lagna he not only aspects the fifth house but is the ninth lord and he is associated with he is associated with La, fifth lord venus fifth lord. so f- fifth and ninth lords venus and rahu are in the lagna so rahu is certainly a good planet to give children of course venus this would have been probably a good candidate too even though from sun and from moon for actually from moon venus aspects the fifth house from sun the fifth lord rahu is with venus and from lagna venus is the fifth lord himself so venus is equally strong candidate so apart from rahu venus could have given children but venus the sad doesn't come at an appropriate age it comes very late in life yes very late and i hope i don't get more children in that age that the... <laughs> so patience <laughs> so like this i take the chart and i look at mm. the dasha i spend a couple of minutes uh, typically half minute figuring out the right dasha and the right seed mm. after that basically things flow smoothly and one note of caution here yes the, this is when you use the divisional chart if the lagna is accurate and if you find the right dasha things will actually be pretty smoothly working without having to beat around the bush that much but the thing is see let, let, let's just take a step back suppose we were doing conventional astrology where you just see the vimshotri dasha you will see that mercury gave the children actually this is not a this is not a terrific example mercury is still aspecting the fifth house here so he can give children right so if you were just using the rashi chart dasha and using the saptamsha but suppose i was using just rashi chart i i'm not even using saptamsha so i got children in mercury dasha and what is the link the only link is mercury is with the fifth lord he has no other link with the fifth house but because he's the he's he's aspect he's associating with the fifth lord even though there is enough distance between them 4 degree and 16 degree there is enough distance between fifth lord and mercury still there will be some justification that you can always give so mm. similarly if you want to explain the ups and downs in career again you can give some explanation based on rashi also but what i am saying is if you take the divisional chart and dasha in that directly things will fall in place in a more uh, simple manner and thumb rules like planets in exaltation or planets in friendly signs planets in mola trikona giving good results all the yogas they will work in a more clear manner if you use the right divisional chart but the word of caution here is don't assume that the time that you have is accurate if the time is off by a few seconds or minutes the lagna in the divisional chart can be off and if that happens your analysis can go go out the window so if this wasn't the lagna suppose lagna was here lagna was not gemini but taurus all the analysis would have been different so for that you have to be sure that the time is right and never assume that the time that your client gives you is accurate so what you can do for this is you can 
you can see the in the jagannath hora menu you can see when will lagna change sign in this divisional chart when you click that it will tell you how much time you have to go backwards or how much time you have to go forward in order for this lagna to change so you can see how much leeway you have when you look at a chart suppose when i do this i find that lagna is on a border in a particular side chart for example let's take d24 i think it will be in a border there so when i take d24 34 seconds later lagna will change sign from cancer to whatever is the next sign i think the next sign is gemini after cancer gemini comes because it's an even sign so it can be the and if you want to do that you want to affect that change you can actually do this change button to move lagna to the next sign the next sign after cancer is actually gemini so it will basically do that so it change the time to 51 14 let's undo that change this is the button you can click to undo the change so i have i know that based on the analysis that i have done not only with the natal chart and dashas but with various other annual charts i i i know that this time is working well for me so i stick to this time but the thing is when you get a new chart i never assume that the time is accurate i always go back and i adjust the time forward and backward and then you may say okay 34 seconds later d24 lagna will change 2 minutes later the samsa will change which one do i want i may say in d24 i want the next sign but in d10 the current sign is enough that explains the known things then i will like that i can find the window the correct time window where i'm getting all the divisional charts with the right lagnas to explain the things that i know about the person so you can ask the person can you tell me something about you when various things happen take three or four important events in life preferably in the area of life that you are looking at or if not then some other area of life and then see if you can either in the natal chart or in one of the annual charts you can find something on the border some lagna in a divisional chart on the border and see which one makes better sense and based on that you can arrive at what time is working for but time rectification there are thumb rules that people use like some analytical formulas like kunda etc these are based on this assumption that birth can only happen in small quanta it can't happen if it doesn't happen in these uh minute and half it can't happen for the next 10 minutes and then another minute and half it can happen so like that it divides time into quanta where one quantum is conducive other quanta are not conducive i don't think that that is all uh in my opinion not really what what pursuing basically we know that birth happens in a very close quanta people are born every 2 minutes also we see that in the case of uh triplets twins quadruplets etc people can be born within 2 3 minutes so all those analytical principles that automatically arrive at some lagna i don't suggest using those the best approach is get a few events from the life of the person and then re reverse engineer see if those explain the events that you know and then if it doesn't explain see if i move the lagna to the previous sign or the next sign will it explain better and suppose you have to change the time by 20 minutes to make a particular change then maybe it's not right don't consider it but the thing is if it is close enough if the change that you need is within uh, a few minutes then maybe it is worth considering so for example in this navamsa 11 minutes back or 2 minutes forward lagna will change 11 minutes back maybe unlikely if the person tells me lagna is time is pretty accurate maybe this is unlikely but maybe this is possible so consider that and if you don't believe the person you believe that maybe it is off by even quarter hour 15 minutes then consider that also so consider the possibilities in the vicinity of what was given to you in the neighborhood of the time that was given to you see which one is making better sense and i will try to do some examples of rectification in one session in a, at a future date but the only way to do rectification is hard work get events and see if they are lining up in the natal chart and also in the annual charts and if they are lining up get see how much window you have basically and keep narrowing the window if you don't have enough window based on the events you are given maybe you have to go back and ask can you give me more events and then maybe you will find one event which will place 
an event on the border of a sign in one of the annual charts and then maybe you can confidently rectify yeah if i move it by 30 seconds it doesn't make sense anymore so it has to be this or before so like that you have to find events to narrow down the time so once you have time narrowed down and you are confident of the lagna in the divisional chart then you can be confident of the dashas etc otherwise your analysis can only be as accurate as, as your data so that is something important to remember thank you very much for this because yeah. you've also shown how to use the many factors in here and i know right. that the viewers are going to appreciate this and in if we, uh, in in the next session when we do the annual charts i think things will become even more sense because mm -hmm. nettle chart is not the only chart where you have a window of opportunity for example here like i said in the samsa the time will change 8 minutes back or 7 minutes forward so suppose i know that this time is accurate within 5 minutes mm -hmm. so i know that lagna has to be this there can't be change here but maybe if i look at the annual chart of a particular year maybe lagna will be on a border and then maybe i can i can figure out which one is making more sense explaining the known past better and then i can maybe say okay this time has to be within this window so the bottom line is you have to based on known events we have to fix the birth time to a, as narrow a window as possible and the narrower the window that you have with confidence the more confident you can be in predictions otherwise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can it is basically more speculation so let's take one more example so let me show you an exa another example of the samsha this is the chart of president ronald reagan who who was the president of us from 1980 to 1988 so if you look at his chart the samsha chart you will see that mars is in one sign mola trikona he is very strong right mercury is also strong being exalted but ashtotri dasha is the dasha that applies in this chart because lagna lord from lagna lords uh, whether you take saturn or rahu as lagna lord rahu is in a quadrant or trine from the lagna lord and mars is strong so ashtotri dasha will apply so if you use ashtotri dasha and the dasha corresponding to mercury is not as i don't believe it is applicable you can you can do the analysis and you can find but the best dasha for this chart is ashtotri and from janazara from moon so if you do the ashtotri from moon of d10 you will see that from 1969 to 1990 this person had venus dasha that is a terrific dasha when you if you just use the classical principles of uh, fifth house being power and yokarka being in any house will be good for that house etc venus is yokarka here right he is the fourth and ninth lord so he wants a quadrant and a trine so he is yokarka for aquarius sign and he is in the fifth house of power so when the when when a when a yokarka is in the fifth house of power that is good for getting power so it was indeed in the venus dasha that he became the president of us and also i think he was governor before all that happened in the venus dasha it was all his political power was in venus dasha and before that in rahu dasha rahu is also a good planet because he is lagna lagna lord lagna shows lagna shows you were very sen sense of self and he's 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 a benefic planet for you and because he's in the 10th house lagna lord in the 10th will give you a good career and rahu shows illusion etc and films and acting etc are covered by rahu they are partly rahu and partly venus so rahu dasha gave him success as a actor but it was really venus dasha that gave made him more popular in the world as a governor of california first and as a president of us and presidency came in 1979 november and that was actually venus mercury and that the if you look at mercury he is the fifth lord and he is exalted even though he is in the eighth house of suddenness or roller coaster ride he is the fifth lord so exalted fifth lord santar dasha in yokarka and fifth house dasha and also if you look at arun lagna venus from the arun lagna is the fifth lord of power placed in the lagna which is a very auspicious placement mm -hmm. right and the lord is also exalted so it shows somebody with a very rich image very powerful image because arun lagna lord is exalted and secondly oh. you will see that al is conjoined with a9 and a7 so the tangible manifestation of your interactions with world a7 and tangible manifestation of your persona 
a tangible manifestation of your fortune they are all together so somebody who's act, interacting with the world in a fortunate manner as tangible to the world so that's what this combination shows a a9 and a7 and because venus is the planet in it he is the one who brought that so his dasha during his dasha he was a superstar in the world, first in the us and in, in the world next he was a very influential person and that's because of all the factors that i have mentioned mm. so and we will see later how you can actually look at the annual charts and see that 1979 annual chart actually triggered this that we will see later but for now we will just look at the we will just look at the uh, uh, natal chart let's let's look at a famous astrologer see kn rao who revolutionized astrology by writing nice books and also teaching a lot of students who are doing excellent research and writing lot of books so this is the chart of sri kn rao you can see the birth data here uh if you look at the dashamsha this is the dashamsha chart of sri kn rao uh, based on the ayanamsha and the definition of dashamsha that i used so if you see his chart the most applicable dasha in his case he shorshotri dasha you will see that uh actually i will not shorshotri dasha i will not go into the details of why but shorshotri is the most applicable dasha in his chart so if you find shorshotri of d10 you will see that he during sanjay dasha was a good dasha he was a he had a successful career as a bureaucrat in india he was i forget exactly which part of the country but there was he was i think in accounting department or something he was in some government department he was a he was an influential bureaucrat in indian government and saturn is a yokarka and he is yes. the 10th lord aspecting the 10th house and saturn gives bureaucracy when saturn is a strong planet bureaucracy is one of the things that saturn can give so saturn the sa was a successful the sa that way and then during the ketu the sa he became more he uh, ketu is the 7th lord in the 6th house so ketu being the 7th lord can give some interactions with the world but the thing is he is in the 6th house of depriving from interactions with the world so he came into the world a little bit especially relating to ketu kind of work which is astrology so he came into the world a little bit he participated in some conferences etc but again because ketu is still in the 6th house the interactions weren't full blown and then the moon dasha changed everything if you look at moon hmm. moon is the third lord of interaction of initiative and he is in the 7th house so he is associated with three uh, two kama trikonas third lord in the 7th house so hmm. and moon and venus are jala tattva planets watery planets watery planets watery nature is important for interacting with people understanding what people are saying making your thoughts and feelings understood by people so for any communications and interactions with the world watery planets are very important and two watery planets are in a watery sign here and moon is also the third lord of initiative so writing books taking part in various conferences seminars and taking classes teaching students all these things by the way why teaching mercury is the third lord, sorry fifth lord of students he's in the third house of communication and moon is the dispositor of mercury so moon has a link with the fifth house also but yes. mainly being the third lord in seventh he gives more and more interactions with people and lot of communications and all that happened during the moon dasha so during moon dasha he went on us tours for astrological conferences he started teaching at bharti vidya bhavan regularly he created a whole class of astrologers during this dasha and that is that is moon dasha and then mercury dasha mercury is in the third house and he is the fifth lord so in the mercury dasha because he is the fifth lord there were his students became uh, he had lot of students who were successful writers and also he himself started the journal became very successful journal of astrology so all these activities and more and more books were published by him and also by his students so being the karaka of writing in the third house of communications mercury gave a lot of writings in his dasha so these two dashas were key to various intra uh, activities relating to communications in his in his uh, work in the world so this is like this you can see uh, 
uh, see in the rashi chart i'll give one more example swami vivekananda you will see that his career was very ordinary and what is the dasha applicable in his case divsaptati samadasha because seventh lord rahu is in lagna and the controlling planet for divsaptati samadasha is rahu and for rahu whether he to see whether he is strong or weak we don't necessarily look at whether he is in ucha or own sign or mola trikona etc if he is with other planets especially with sun and moon he is very strong he basically when he is tormenting moon he becomes extremely strong so here rahu is strong and he and so disaptati samadasa applies so if you take the disaptati samadasa yeah. we will come back to vivekananda chart i have to figure something out i haven't figured out which dasha applies correctly okay. we'll figure out a little later we'll come back to vivekananda chart again but let's see george w bush another president of us so this is another example where a rare conditional dasha applies so if you see his dashamsha in the dashamsha venus is particularly strong right of course mm. mars is also exalted but mars is the controlling planet for ashtotri dasha and for ashtotri dasha rahu has to be in a quadrant or trine from lagna lord so lagna lord moon is in gemini and rahu in capricorn is not in a quadrant or trine so ashtotri doesn't apply but venus is the controlling planet for a dasha called panchotri dasha and panchotri applies when the dwadashamsha is in cancer so for cancer you reckon the dwadashamsha is from gemini and come back to cancer so again this is this is one of the refined divisional charts that i use for uh, normally what people do is they start from the sign and take 12 signs to find the dwadashamsha in any the sign they take start from the sign itself for example in gemini the first dwadashamsha will be gemini itself next one cancer next one leo and so on and the last one will be in taurus and they do the same for even signs and what i reckon is my definition is it has to be reversed so you for aries you start from aries and go till pisces but for taurus you start from aries and you go in reverse and you end in taurus instead of starting in taurus you end in taurus so you can see that there is a nice pattern you go from aries to pisces then aries to taurus then gemini to taurus then gemini to cancer then leo to virgo then uh sorry leo to cancer then leo to virgo like that if you see if you plot the 12 in aries the 12 in taurus the 12 in gemini the 12 in cancer when you do that you will see that they are continuous you are going across the zodiac then you are going to the next sign and going across the zodiac and then going to the next sign and going and, and so on so i take in reverse for even signs and i'm i'm convinced that this is the right definition for dwadashamsha so when you do that the last the last dwadashamsha of cancer which is at the because 29 degree 37 is the last last one twelfth right of cancer the last one half degrees of uh, cancer so this falls in the last one so because we are starting from gemini and going in reverse and ending in cancer the last one will be cancer itself so the dwad the dwadashamsha of lagna in this d10 happens to be in can the cancer itself by the way if you want to if you don't want to do it manually you can just find subdivisional chart for research you can say take the d10 and further divide that into d12 take d10 as rashi chart and find d12 of it so you can actually use that feature when you do that you will see that lagna is actually in cancer so so the rule is for panchotri dasha the rule is lagna has to be in panch, in cancer in dwadashamsha and you can do that by finding the dwadashamsha of whichever chart you are seeing here so anyway you can, this is very easy to manually compute also like i showed here but the bottom line is because lagna is in dwadashamsha of of cancer the panchotri dasha is actually applicable and because the controlling planet venus is exalted and he is not basically at the fact end or beginning of a sign he is in the fifth degree you can use that dasha so when i use the panchotri dasha of dashamsha these are the dashas i get and his success political success came in jupiter dasha right he became president in jupiter dasha so if you see his rashi chart there is a rajyoga 
in the 12th house between lagna lord moon and the ninth lord jupiter so there is a rajoga between lagna lord and ninth lord even though it is in the 12th house of being contented or being carefree or giving things leaving things to others that is what the 12th house shows and kind of he did that as a president some people say that dick cheney and in the beginning donald rumsfeld ran the government so he the fact that the rajoga happens in the 12th house shows that you are contented you give you don't take things easy but still this is a rajoga between lagna lord and the ninth lord and secondly from the arudh lagna which shows your image the tangible image jupiter is the fifth lord so the fifth lord jupiter and the lagna lord moon uh, sorry ninth lord moon are together in the eighth house of unexpected gains or sudden gains or uh big success sudden sudden big success so jupiter the sa is capable of giving him political power in this in this the samsha chart and also if you look at ghati lagna again for that you have to be really really confident of the time he is the fifth lord jupiter is the fifth lord but it was the jupiter the sa that made him the governor of texas first and then reelected as governor of texas and also president of us and again president of uh, again reelected as president let us take another kind of example let us see uh, spirituality so let's go back to swami shivanand shivananda saraswati's chart of rishikesh so let's take the d20 chart okay so in swami shivananda's d20 shodashatri dasha is the most applicable dasha and you can you can find out for yourself if you go through the pdf that i shared and you apply the principles there there is a clear procedure using which you will arrive at the fact that vimshotri sorry shodshotri is the correct dasha in this chart uh, jupiter is the controlling planet for it he is in mola trikona here so in, if you find shodshotri dasha you will see that in this chart this this is the key dasha that transformed his life he renounced everything he went, he came to india in 1923 and and in 1924 he went to rishikesh his guru came and found him and he he was he was he was uh he immediately left everything he was given diksha by his guru initiation by his guru he locked himself in a hut infested with scorpions and snakes and sat still and he did sadhana for many hours together every day and he experienced nirvikalpa samadhi in a few years and he became realized so this was the dasha that gave him realization mystical experiences and realization of self and if you look at the dasha that was running based on the shodashatri dasha the dasha was that of ketu ketu dasha was running between 1917 and 1932 so ketu why did ketu give that ketu give the renunciation see renunciation is given by the moksha trikona eighth and 12th houses so eighth house is the lord of the eighth house of eighth house a moksha trikona and also if you look here the arudha pada the ul is here the 12th house is the house of giving things up letting things go and the arudha pada of that is the tangible manifestation of letting things go so in other words i may be living a mar- regular life i may be a uh, an engineer or engineering manager and i may have wife and children i may be earning money i may be doing things in the world but still internally i may develop complete detachment but the thing is world will not see that but suppose i take sanyasa i became i i i become a sanyasi a guru comes and gives me diksha i renounce i wear orange clothes saffron clothes and i start living in a hut people will see ah he has given up he has let things go so that, that is tangible so tangible sign of his renunciation is from the ul so here ketu is in ul <coughs> so and venus is the lord of ul and also he has argada on ul so being the planet in ul and being the lord of the ul ketu dasha venus antar dasha can certainly give that so his renunciation came in venus ketu dasha venus antar dasha and also after that he did lot of sadhana so overall ketu dasha gave a lot of sadhana and the sadhana is shown by the eighth house and ketu ketu being the lord of the eighth house and also he is aspecting the eighth house so because of that and also from the arun lagna 
from the tangible image he is associated with the eighth house from eighth lord from arudh lagna so from arudh lagna rahu is the eighth lord so he is associated with him and he himself is the eighth lord and he is aspecting the eighth house so because of that ketu can certainly give a lot of sadhana and lot of lot of experiences eighth house is also the house of kundalini and other mystical experiences and he is one of the greatest saints even though he is a vedanti and he is a great bhakta he is also he is one of the few yogis who is really learned in raja yoga which is basically a path of forcing your kundalini to rise through some breathing exercises and control over your prana and he was one of the few exponents of that and he actually wrote a nice book on that also that path is very dangerous and not really suitable for most people this age but he was one of the people who could do that and that kind of path are shown by rahu and ketu and the fact that ketu is the eighth lord aspecting aspecting the eighth house uh, that is basically what was giving him that particular result and also all this happened in the ketu dasha and if you look at moon dasha moon is the one who made him famous he became famous as a saint his saint sainthood was built in moon dasha and because moon is in the arudh lagna he is the arudh lagna lord in arudha his image will be built during that dasha and also his image as a compassionate and and empathetic saint as a very kind saint was built during this dasha and when i say image was built i'm not saying wrongly or anything it's not like he engaged in any image building simply he engaged with the world and world saw that he was a very compassionate person it came out in his personality that's, that's basically what it means so during the moon dasha all that happened and also from lagna if you see moon is the fourth lord and fourth house is the house of having a sense of direction knowing what you are doing and also it is the house of building something right fourth house is the house of building a house and in the case of d20 it can be the it can be building a building an organization fourth house can show building a spiritual organization and because moon is the fourth lord in the fourth house of building something in moon dasha he built something he built the organization the divine life society was established and it became well established in india and some foreign countries so all that happened in the moon dasha the fourth lord in fourth and also being the if arudh lagna lord in arudh lagna he became well known and his image was built during that dasha so moon dasha was a very auspicious dasha from that point of view and if you take my own chart pvr narsimha rao if you take my own chart uh, in my dwa vimshamsha also the same dasha will apply shorshotri dasha i believe uh, jupiter yeah yeah jupiter is in ajvita rashi so shorshotri dasha will apply in my own chart and in my case also just like in the other case where we said that ketu dasha gave mystical experiences and realization because ketu is the eighth lord aspecting the eighth house in my own chart saturn dasha was giving lot of uh, i was doing pujas etc satyanarayan vratam every full moon day and then lakshmi sashto lakshmi 108 time puja 108 times every friday like that i was doing my own uh, meditation puja etc and saturn being the ninth and 10th lord in mola trikona he gives uh, good good uh, good actions good dharma good karma he allows you to follow dharma follow religion so i was religious i was doing austerities i was fasting i was doing pujas so all that was given by shani but ketu changed the track he changed the course ketu is the seventh lord in the eighth house and seventh lord in the eighth is a marka planet seventh lord in eighth can give death but the thing is this is the chart of spiritual pursuit trying to understand who you are and death in that particular aspect is actually not an inauspicious thing it shows experiencing something that gives that basically puts to rest your pursuit for truth so similarly rahu and ketu like i said in the previous example are the planets of mystical experiences so ketu dasha triggered some mystical experiences etc it was specifically ketu moon that that gave mystical experiences that gave some clarity on what is real and what is unreal and not really caring about unreal things and ketu is in the eighth house from lagna and from ketu from dasha lord ketu moon is in the eighth house in own sign and in general planets in one sign mola trikona etc are 
are powerful so kyud dasya moon and dasya gave some mystical experiences and in general kyud dasya gave uh, spiritual spiritual progress and particularly actually let's not go into further details let's skip to vivekananda's chart and let's see uh, vimshamsha in his chart so if you look at vimsha uh, vivekananda's vimshamsha what really stands out here the eighth house rahu ketu those row don't really stand out in for example sivananda's chart eighth house and rahu ketu axis on the eighth house really stands out in vivekananda's case the third house stands very prominently this is the most powerful house in his vimshamsha so the third has the seventh lord moon and ketu 11th lord ketu so there is prominence of kama trikonas third house has the seventh and 11th lords and also ketu is extremely powerful here according to some people ketu has his mola trikona in pisces basically he 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 corresponds to meena avatara of vishnu and meena is the sign of fish so ketu is very comfortable there so and also ketu shows moksha and this is the 12th house of the natural zodiac so ketu feels very at home quite at home when he is in pisces so it is a very auspicious sign so ketu is very powerful and also the lord jupiter is exalted and aspecting this combination so out of all these planets ketu and jupiter are particularly standing out and what does the third house show it shows interacting with the world third is the house of communications having initiative writing things speaking to people all that is shown by third house so in vivekananda's case what is really prominent is interacting with the world communicating with the world that is standing out more than uh, experiencing things etc so if you look at dasas uh, i believe the most relevant dasa in his case also is shorshotri actually in all the three vimshamsha examples we have seen it is shorshotri dasa so if you see shorshotri dasa okay if you see the shorshotri dasa uh, from d20 moon kyutu dasha between 1875 and 1890 it it ran during the time when he was with ramakrishna and he received a lot of knowledge from ramakrishna right so they say that third house is also the house of guru padesha guru padesha means instruction from the teacher so uh, ninth house is the house of guru and the seventh is interacting with the guru so ketu ke and ketu and also from the ninth house of guru ketu is the third lord in the seventh house so it he shows gurus interacts communications and gurus interactions so being the third lord in the seventh from ninth house of guru there were lot of interactions with guru so during this time during the ketu dasya he had a lot of interactions with guru he spent a lot of time with with his spiritual master ramakrishna paramhamsa and in the and also he went around india he for example he met, met met kings and scholars he interacted with them on various spiritual matters he interacted with the scholars of kashi and particularly there was a king of khetri who became a good friend and he was the reason why he came to us later so all these interactions led into spiritual matters across india that came in ketu dasha apart from guru padesha and finally in moon dasha if you look at moon moon is the Uh, seventh lord of interactions with the world seventh house shows going out in the world it is the house of desire and also the house of interacting with the world and also the house of business but here it is the house of interacting with the world and because he is in the third house of communications he is from lagna see ketu was very important with respect to kama trikonas because he connected two kama trikonas from ninth house but if you see the So, uh, lagna itself moon, moon is a very important planet because he is the he is the seventh lord in the third house so in the moon dasha he went and also moon and jupiter are in mutual trines and when moon and tr- jupiter are in mutual trines it can give a lot of fame also so during the during the moon dasha he traveled a lot across the world and also from the arun lagna of image he is in the 11th house and in general the thumb rule given by parashara is any planets in the in the 11th house from arul lagna will promote your image specifically your image your the recognition that your image gets in the world is from the 5th house from arul lagna and moon is aspecting that moreover a5 
which shows tangible recognition in the world tangible manifestation of recognition by the world that is being aspected by moon so he has a connection with a5 he has a connection with seventh and third houses so he gave lot of he toured the world he gave a lot of uh, speeches lot of books were written by him and whatever communications he engaged in during this period that became the fountain head that became the foundation on which entire uh, spread of hinduism in the west and as a matter of fact in the entire world stood in the coming century or so so this was that was given by moon moon dasha wonderful and we we can see actually let's let's quickly see i won't go through dashas but let's quickly see his navamsha if you look at his navamsha see the oh actually we already looked at his navamsha we saw that arul lagna has ketu so basically there is deprivation in marriage and i want to see one more thing in his chart see the d3 the drakana chart so if you see the drakana chart you see that arul lagna his tangible manifestation has moon and saturn and on from lagna if you see the third house of siblings third house of uh, younger siblings you see that moon and saturn combination is there and also lagna lord who shows your intelligence the uh, how your thinking is directed so application of your intelligence so the lagna lord is with moon and saturn moon saturn combination is never an auspicious combination it shows sadness depression etc so because moon saturn combination is in the third house and also on the lagna lord there were some undesirable things with his siblings so he had nine siblings and i think four of them are so committed suicide his four sisters committed suicide so all that is basically i won't go through the dashas here because i don't know the exact times when that happened but you can see from this drakana that there is something unhappy about siblings and as a matter of fact his siblings were did have unhappy lives hmm. and also if you look at the uh Okay, actually, let's let's leave it for now. So, like this, basically, my to take a step back, my approach is: I look at the divisional chart of interest. I look at Lagna to see the reality, and I look at Arun Lagna to see what the world is perceiving. And sometimes that may be, if both are divorced, if both have some common theme, then that will be my prediction. But if one of them is really, really divorced from the other, then that shows that there is some difference between what is happening on the ground as the world can see. and what the person is feeling inside so arul hmm. lagna is very important so i look at arul lagna i look at lagna i look at important combinations particularly strong or weak houses and i see when those dashas will be triggered here in hmm. vivekananda's case ketu moon and jupiter would have been really important dashas unfortunately jupiter never came so you can identify the important dashas in that particular hmm. divisional chart and you can make predictions based on that and then this gives you long term window you can say that during 1892 or 1906 there is a chance of some fame because moon is aspecting the moon is aspecting the fifth house from al and also a5 itself and also he is he is taking part in some nice combinations nice yogas here for example the seventh and ninth lord are together hmm. that's the raj yoga so he is taking part in some raj yogas associated with dharma and interactions so basically there were a lot of dharmic interactions so you can say all that but particularly why in 1893 september he came to prominence until then he was just another spiritual uh, seeker who was just talking to a few people around him but after that his profile was raised he suddenly became a celebrity and so many people were inspired by him after that why that year made a difference for that we can look at the annual chart solar and soli lunar annual charts and after a short break we will have another session where we will look at the annual charts